Annie, you gonna help me make dinner? Yep. Okay, bye. This week, I'm gonna cook for my family using only this book. Stick around to see what we think of it. Uh, welcome to PB with Jay, where I screw up all the recipes. So you don't have to. I mean, the flavor's okay, but I don't like the texture. It's a really good flavor. But I think we'll be making these again. It's really good. Where are we actually doing that? See how it tastes. They taste awesome. Spoiler alert. I'm shocked that I like this as much as I do. What does it look like? Oh. I didn't trick you. It's just sometimes I gotta help encourage you to try new things. That's called trick. Really good. Really good. Ow, mother! Welcome to Plant Based with Jeremy. I'm Jeremy, and here on the channel, we focus on whole food plant-based goodness. That comes in the forms of recipes. I do interviews with other people who have lost a significant amount of weight like I did. And my family and I have been eating for entire weeks using only plant-based cookbooks, or cookbooks that we can adapt. And this week, we're gonna do Plant-Based Delicious by Ashley Madden. I've actually done one of Ashley's other books, The Plant-Based Cookbook, and you can watch that video in a link that I've got down below. This is a book that a lot of you recommended, and when I got it, I was at first really excited because going through this, there are so many gorgeous pictures, but also I was a little intimidated because a lot of these recipes have multiple pages on them, and that's just a lot of work. So I'm going in this with a little apprehension. Apprehension, that's the word I was looking for, apprehension. If at any point throughout this video you're enjoying something that's going on, let us know in the comments below. And if you've got a cookbook that you'd like to see me and my family try for an entire week, let me know down there below. Just so you know, I've got a pretty big list going so far, so it might take me a while to get to it. And stick around to the end of the video where I tell you whether you should buy, borrow, or blow burn. off. Burn. Burn? Burn seems really aggressive. I'm looking for a third B still for like the last category. Burn. Let me know what you think. Right now I'm, I got blow it off. Anyway, stick around to the end of the video and I'll let you know what we think you should do with this cookbook. If you haven't subscribed, do so right now and hit that thumbs up button to let YouTube know that you like this video. Now to the food. For dinner tonight, I'm gonna make this brown rice putin with miso gravy. I'm from Canada, and so poutine, otherwise known as poutine in other parts of the world, it's the same way we just, it's mispronounced a lot, and I also mispronounce it myself from time to time. I'm not gonna tell my kids this is poutine, because they're gonna look at it and be like, that's not a thing. That doesn't look like poutine. Maybe I'll tell them after, see how they react. It'll be poor. They'll, they'll not consider this a poutine. But it's like a, it's called an Asian-inspired nod to Canada's signature disc is the way that um, Ashley describes it in this book. So this is a miso gravy and we're at a miso here at the farm and I went to the grocery store and they didn't have it either. So if you're the kind of person that gets really upset when I don't follow the recipe perfectly, maybe this video is not gonna be for you because I'm a home cook. And so when things like this, I don't have everything, I improvise. And if you're like me and you can't find miso, here's what you do. You can swap out, um, Say for this recipe, for example, I need two tablespoons of miso. So what I'm gonna do instead is combine a tablespoon of tahini and a tablespoon of soy sauce or tamari sauce. Mix those together and that'll give you the same type of flavor you're looking for with the miso sauce. That's an easy home swap you can do that'll give you the same sort of thing. If that bothers you that I'm not doing it perfectly the way the recipe says, that's fine. I respect that. Okay, so this is pretty simple. So I got some rice cooking. We're going to cook some tofu and we're gonna to toss in this little seasoning mix they have in here. Freshest garlic from the farmer's market. Ooh, it's gonna be good. I'm making a mess, Willie. Are you excited for the mess? But why? Are you excited for the taste the mess will make? Possibly. And then we're gonna make like a, a gravy out of shiitake mushrooms. So I just realized I was supposed to cook the garlic with the mushrooms, but I put them in there. Uh, so that's a mistake. Uh, it's still gonna have all the ingredients, just in the wrong cooking order. Make fun of me if you want. I can take it, blend this up. Put them on the mushrooms. 
I was actually able to find shiitake mushrooms. I don't see why you couldn't just use any mushroom you have, honestly, but I did actually was able to find those. So there we go. Annie, you gonna help me make dinner? Yeah. Okay, bye. So the thing about this gravy is you can only get it to a little light simmer, not a boil because the arrowroot flour, or arrowroot starch or powder, whatever you want to call it, won't work as well. Once it gets to a boiling point, it's, uh, it's very heat sensitive. So we just want to thicken this up a little bit. Once you start to see little bubbles forming, you got to turn it down and let it simmer. You know, it's kind of perfect when you can do this and it holds a shape of a line. That's a good thickness for gravy. Yeah. Does it taste miso-y? I think a little. I'll take a little. I mean, it didn't have, miso wasn't the main ingredient, it was mushrooms. I like it. Whoa, it reminds me of something, I don't know what yet. I know, see, what did I just said? What does it remind me of? Whatever it is, I like it. It's a really good flavor. And we you top it with some other vegetables and uh, and you put the gravy stuff on top. It's gonna be good. <laughs> you say you don't want to try the gravy, but you will. Why don't you just go in You're with doing the, it? Go with the mentality that maybe you'll like it. Yay, I'm gonna love this. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hmm. Uh oh. What? Few moments later. Wait a minute, what happened? There was a second there. You're going back again. You're you're not sure. You're so confused right now. I don't know if it tastes good. I can tell you it does. And are you proud of yourself? No. For expanding your horizons? No. Are you gonna put a little gravy on? Yeah. Yeah! Victory! We take the small wins in this house. Falling apart. Okay. Annie's coming, she's hungry. Did you get a work of an appetite? Yeah, I really like it. It's really good. It's got some spice to it. It's uh, creamy, and crunchy, it's flavorful. It feels really healthy. Doesn't feel really heavy. It's a lot of spinach in that bite. Yummy. Everything Willie said times two. It's so good. It, it tastes like it should be unhealthy, but it's not. I love this. I love this so much. Are you talking to your bookie? Get off. Time for dinner. He's booking golf because he's fancy like that. It's okay. Yeah, you like it? It's not the best. Gravy's a bit spicy. Yeah? In a bad way or a good way? In a mad way. Huh. It's called brown rice poutine. Where are the fries? There's, no, <laughs> there's not even potato in here. Get out of my face. So I'm going to say this was like a winner for the adults and the kids were less than impressed. Although Annie is continually confused about how she feels about this meal. So for dinner, we're gonna make spaghetti and beatballs. And I'm exhausted. We're doing a renovation and I did work today. So did Willie. It's gonna be so great though. Yeah, uh, so I've already screwed up on this recipe uh, because I did all the other prep. I cooked beets, I cooked beans, but I didn't realize that I, I forgot the rice and it says you have to cool the rice before you use it. So Willie's making quick rice for me. This. It's gonna be fine. It's all gonna come together. It might not be cooled off completely before it goes in, but that's okay. So essentially, it's just putting everything into the food processor in different stages. So mistake number two, because I guess the beets, it just says one and a half cup beets peeled and chopped. I assume that meant you cooked them in advance because how do you peel a beet without cooking it? And my wife said you peel the peeler. Peeler. Yeah, uh, anyway, so these went. Maybe they'll just be a little bit more moist though, right? That's not a bad thing. Let's see what happens. Uh, PB with Jay. Uh, welcome to PB with Jay where I screw up all the recipes. So you don't have to. Ju judge this recipe with a grain of salt is all the same. We're, we're doing our best, people. I might just need to add more flour, right? It'll just be more liquidy. Maybe I can drain that out. Maybe I can just strain out some of that liquid. But do you cook, so do you cook the beef balls? Yeah, you cook them in the oven. So you may not need to cook them as long. I don't know if I, I don't know. And then baking it. They bake for a long time though, they bake for like an hour. Uh, and I think there's no other vegetables with this other than the, the sauce. 
So I might add some broccoli or peas. We'll see what we got. And we have some basil still, right? Do we have fresh basil still? Yeah. So we're gonna chop that up and put that in too. Try the beef ball mixture. I just had a little bit and I think it's really good. Mmm. Give it a second, the flavors really build. Yeah, you taste the basil. Basil, basil. Basil, basil. Basil, basil. I like it. It's gonna be good. And that's raw. I can't wait till it's cooked. It just smells like pasta sauce. Yeah. Why does it taste like pasta sauce? Because I like it, it's made with beets. I mean, the flavor's okay, but I don't like the texture. Well, if it's when it's in the past, it'll soften up. Mm. I like them. It's like beets, soft on the inside. So I didn't screw the texture too much. No, I don't think so. I like them. I don't know what the texture was supposed to be, but I think they're really nice. They're crispy, soft on the inside. Good flavor. They are pink on the inside. I like it so much. This might be my favorite. Oh my God. What? You always say that. I always say it might be my favorite. <laughs> to every recipe. I was gonna say this might be my favorite, like new beet ball. What do you always Does say? I've never made a beet ball. Yeah, also, why can't I have a new favorite every time? What happens if you don't have a favorite and you just like them all? Are you calling me disingenuous? Yeah. Disingenuine? Dis Dis What's that. the word? Disingenuous. Oh my god! This soup is my new favorite! Oh my god, these tacos are my new favorite! This sandwich, my new favorite. God forbid I try new things. This curry might be my favorite! Oh, are we doing impressions now? Here's my impression of Annie. It's not, it's not okay. It's not so bad. Yeah. This is my impression. Oh God, I hate it. Oh God, I hate it. Is That's that you. Regardless of this one, I really like this. It's really packed full of flavor. I will say this, it was kind of a pain to make. Yeah. Right, let's see what the boy thinks. It's okay. It made better meatball things before, but. But it's my new favorite. No, it should be more savory. Fair not enough. Really That's true. That is true, they do have a bit of a sweeter flavor, but I really like them because of that. I think they're just like the most flavorful, but they're definitely not as savory as other ones we've made. So there's that. But uh, I don't know, I'd say this was the, a win. Is that safe to say though? It's good, like it's not bad? Yes. Yeah? And Annie liked parts of it. One more tip is that you could just make these bigger and turn them into beet burgers. make some peanut butter caramel cookie sandwiches. These look crazy, awesome, delicious, and I would be shocked if they weren't a hit in this house. Don't tell my kids, but there's navy beans in it. Shh. But there's also delicious, uh, delicious dates. So, just keep in mind when you look at this recipe in the book, there's two pages, so don't let it get fooled. You basically gotta make it in two steps. You make cookies, kind of in a traditional method. You put all your dry stuff together, and then the wet, and you add it together. Bake it. So I screwed up because we're doing a little minor, we're doing a minor uh, renovation in our basement. So uh, I, my brain is is in divided places, and I forgot that I didn't read the directions properly. You're supposed to take half the oats and put them in the wet mixture and dry them up. I didn't do that. So these are going to be a lot oatier. They're not going to be quite as smooth as the picture suggested, but I'm sure it's going to turn out fine. It'll be something. But when you make the cookies, you should divide the oats and, and do it properly, not like me. And then you make the uh, date caramel sauce. In the book, it tells me to use a, a high-speed blender. I hate cleaning out my Vitamix for small batch things. So I'm actually gonna try just using my food processor. I think it'll do a fine job for date caramel. It's what I make like sauces in anyway. Everything in there is pretty, pretty soft. I've been soaking the dates for uh, a bit, so I think it's gonna be okay. And if it's a little chunky, I don't care. So, uh, let's do it. Cookie? Oh, it's a thing? 
What is it supposed to be? Apple? Nope, it's a peanut butter caramel. I approve. Very good. Flavors, texture, everything. Really good. Evie likes it. Why doesn't Ephraim have to clean? Because he's a boy. I'm kidding. It's because he's going over a friend and he already helped. It's really good. Yeah? Mm-hmm. With creaminess. And um, well, the cream texture is a bit weird, but you won't think about that right now. The peanut butter and goodness. Ooh. Ooh. This is my new favorite. <laughs> I had to do that to make fun of Annie. This is really nice. I think the texture would have been a little bit different if I hadn't screwed up the oat part, but it's chewy, it's creamy. Like the flavors are really, really great. It's not overly sweet. Cinnamon. Peanut butter. It's really good. Reminds me of something. It reminds me like a peanut butter cookie a little bit, but not really as peanut butter. I'm so good. Definitely recommend. Would like to try it half ground up. Oops. But I think we'll be making these again. And what's also great is that the amount of filling the book has in the recipe, it makes like almost double. So you could either half it if you wanted to, but I don't think it would blend up as well. Or you can keep it and use it as like a dip for fruit, like apples, or as a spread on toast with like jam or something. It'd be really good. Four to four, everyone liked it. So tonight for dinner, we're gonna make tofu shakshuka. Have you ever had shakshuka, Wooly? I've never heard of shakshuka. Shakshuka. Shak? Shak. Shu? Shu. Ka. Ka, shakshuka. There you go. Uh, it's traditionally like kind of like a tomatoey beanie stew and they cook eggs in it. So the difference is here we're using tofu. This is not sound like my kind of meal. It's gonna be a little tomatoey. I don't like tomatoes. I do! And so does Efi and Annie. We have different palates in this house. Yeah. And yet we manage. Okay. So essentially you make this in kind of two parts, it seems, which is basically uh, you have to make like a tofu egg in the blender and then you make this stew type thing in a skillet but in the skillet then you plop the eggs into the skillet and you put that in the oven you let that bake so the, the tofu gets hard and, and a bit crispy so it takes a bit which is it sounds complicated for a baseball night it does sound complicated for a baseball night no, it's not that complicated, because you're gonna help me. We got this, and Annie got braces. So who knows what she'll even eat this, but she'll probably try it. I, I picked soft foods for the next couple days from this cookbook to help us out with her braces situation. I'm the first one at the table, so I'm just gonna eat and tell you what I think. Ooh. I like all the different textures. The tofu is nice because it's got a little, not a crunch, but like firmness to it, but it really melts in your mouth. And it's kind of like a little, like a Hungarian stew, I think. A lot of smoked paprika in there. This is really tasty. I like this a lot. What do you think it looks like? What do you, what's your prediction? You gonna love this meal? No. You get some tofu in there? I think the flavors are good. I just don't like tomatoes. I just don't. I'm totally interesting. Right? It's gonna need interesting texture, right? Blend it up. Yeah, it's like blend it up with some nutritional yeast, some kalamanac, and lemon. I think that's it. I can get behind the tofu. Yeah. I'm predicting this is more of an adult cookbook than a kid cookbook so far. Mm. Not necessarily a cookbook for the whole family, maybe. Maybe just for you. <laughs> Maybe. How is it, Annie? Oh, what's on your mouth? And you got braces. Yay. How do you feel? They hurt. Yeah, that's why I made soft like, food for you. Even if I go like this, it hurts. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I made soft food. Still doesn't help. Oh. How's the flavor, though? It's really good. If you get braces, ice water helps them stop hurting for 15 minutes. Nice. Don't sneeze less than 30 minutes after you get home from your appointment because you'll break two brackets. <laughs> like me. Mm. Mm, it smells good. 
Really good. I like the flavors. I like the tech. I like everything. It's good. Yeah. Winner, uh, winner. I eat it again. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. A rare winner from everyone. We made any chia pudding for dessert. If you want my chia pudding recipe, it's in the link in the description down below. I put it in lots of videos, so I'm not putting it on this one. Also, it's not in this cookbook. I'm gonna whisper because it's late at night. So as I mentioned earlier, my daughter just got braces put on, so her teeth are pretty sensitive. So I'm gonna make this three grain slow cooker porridge. Um, normally we just have like regular oatmeal, with just oats. But what this one is, is a combination of still cut oats, buckwheat groats, and amaranth. And I've never made porridge with all of these ingredients before. And then basically just putting those together with some water and I think a little bit of salt, cinnamon calls for, and then cook them overnight in the instant pot. It's super liquidy, but as I stir it, it's getting thicker. It's definitely a little bit of it's burnt at the bottom. And to be fair, I did this in a, in a pressure cooker as opposed to a slow cooker, which I don't have. But it's uh, it's getting there. Annie, sore, very sore. That's a nice base. So we're gonna flavor these up. Banana too hard. It's sort of got a weird flavor. Yeah, well, it's a different. It's just a slightly different flavor. But I added some maple syrup and some peanut butter. So you're not sure how you feel about it? Uh huh. I don't like it. No. Sorry. Damn it. Yeah, it's good. Very nice. Yeah, like that. Yeah? Yeah, like that. And he said it tastes like baking soda. Okay. Not sure why. It tastes yeah. really good. So I quite like this. It definitely has a bit of a, I don't know, it's like a bitterer flavor. Bitterer, is that a word? Uh, that I can see why the kids don't love as much, although I put maple syrup in that thing. I like this as an alternative to oatmeal, and I got a big pot of it if no one else eats it, so that's a good thing. So, uh, give it a shot. The grains are definitely different. It takes some getting used to. It's not quite the same as oatmeal. Slightly different flavor. And a different texture, too, which is kind of nice. So, if you're looking for something to switch it up with your oatmeal on a regular basis, maybe this is the new recipe for you. And it's like regular oatmeal, you can customize it and put whatever you want into it. I've loaded mine up with fruit and put some hemp seed on and stuff. I'm gonna make what is being called in this book, the essential to lentil soup. Because it's soft and I think it'll be good for Annie's mouth. And it also doesn't have tomatoes, which so I think it'll be good for Willie's tummy and taste buds. Um, this seems simple enough. It's a soup. Throw everything into a pot and cook it, right? That's basically actually what we do but you put certain things in at certain times. All right, I gotta cut some stuff. But you like the flavors? Yeah, it was okay. If it wasn't for your braces, you'd like it? Mm -hmm. uh, what'd you think of the soup? I thought it was very delicious. Yeah? Good good flavors, kind of like um, like curry-ish flavors. Yeah, there's But not ginger. overpowering. It was really lovely. Really lovely. Yeah, I liked it too. Um, and Ephraim had two friends over and they they finished their bowls, right? Yeah, they said delicious. That's a good sign. Well, they might have been being polite, but... Uh, they're good kids, and they they, they they wouldn't do me wrong. They they tend to didn't like it. They so they would lie for you. They would lie for me. Ephraim wouldn't though. I haven't I so we might not get his review. Anyway, I thought it was delicious. It had a brightness to it. It wasn't super heavy. I think if I was gonna change anything, I might uh, puree a little bit of it just to make it thicker. But that's really it. Good soup. We're gonna make this recipe called my best chili and see if it'll become our best chili. We've made a lot of chilies in this house, and so I can imagine people are gonna be picky about this one. This one is different than anything we've made before, though. It's got some mustard seeds in here, cumin seeds. She calls for black mustard seeds. Those are the hot as 
ones. So I'm going to change those over to yellow. I'm sorry. It's a heat factor and my kids just won't eat it. This one also uses tempeh, but you grind it up and mushrooms. I'm just not going to tell my daughter and see if she notices because it should get minced inside of it. Shouldn't be big chunks. I'm looking forward to this. I always like a good chili. Should we avoid making this super spicy eat? You want to make it super spicy, really? I know, she says black mustard seeds, which are the mean ones. The flavors do build, but I can see why she puts in so much spice and I eliminated some of it. Cause I think that's what the flavor is, it's just spice. But it's nice, like it's, it's got a richness of flavor. I, I quite like it actually. It's pretty good. It's not my favorite chili I've ever had, but if you wanted, if this is your first time making a vegan chili, I think you would be very happy with this. What'd it look like? Poo. It looks like poo? It doesn't taste like poo. It's okay, but I want sweet potato fries. You want sweet potato fries? Yeah. I wish I could make you sweet potato fries, Annie, but I don't have any sweet potatoes. I can make you regular fries. It's not the same. This is not the first time Annie's asked for fries when I made a dinner. I want French fries. But you're eating it. You tasted it and you're having more? It's pretty good, cheese, but, I think, but I think taco soup's better. Huh? Yeah, you like our taco soup better? Yeah. But if, if this is like someone's first chili, you think it's a good entry point? Sure, maybe put some beer in it. Would you spice it up more? Because you and I reduce the spice. Uh, maybe a little bit and put some beer then. Like the okay. Kevin's chili from you the office? I think Ephraim's favorite chili we've ever made was one that he got from the, is it the Kevin from the office chili? It's pretty good as far as chili goes. I'm not a very big chili fan, but. I'd say this is a pretty good chili. I'm shocked that we all liked it. We put some vegan cheese in. And you like the chili tonight? I know. Chili had tempeh in it. I knew there was something like that in there. But you still liked it. Yeah, because you tricked me. And mushrooms. Well, that was the same. Look at the color. Fingers. Oopsie. I didn't trick you. It's just sometimes I got to help encourage you to try new things. That's called a trick. All right, so this was a winner for everyone. We all liked it. Solid chili. I'm gonna make fudgy beet brownies. I made beets the other day for the other meal we made, so now I'm gonna turn them into a dessert. I've never used beets in a dessert before, but I've used stuff like sweet potato and whatnot, and I can't imagine it would be a different thing. I'm curious what the earthy flavor will do to it, but in a, in a brownie, I bet it's gonna be a good thing. So. I'm kind of excited to throw this together. It seems pretty simple. It's, uh, what I'm excited about is that it's it's a brownie using ingredients I haven't used before, like a chickpea flour, walnuts inside of it, so mixed into the milk mixture, like a fat. So uh, let's see if this is, becomes a new brownie favorite in our house. We've already got some brownie recipes we really like, so let's see if this one compares. Looks like a pink milkshake. Milkshake? Yeah, you want to try this milkshake? Yeah. Come here. What is that? There's three ingredients in there. Where are they? <laughs> One of those was correct. <laughs> I'm using it for a brownie. Ugh. It's gonna be good. I'm having the brownies. Yes, you will. You were gonna try and don't tell your sister. Hello, today we are cutting brownies. As this pink goo in it that dad made. 
Never mind. No, it does not. Come on, just eat it. Don't listen to Evie. Look, Three, at, look at the color of it. It's like red velvet. You put beets in it. Yeah, beet brownies. <sighs> Yum, but I have to blow my nose. It's really good. I'll tell you after. We think she's got a bit of a cold. Sorry if that's gross for you. Ow, mother oh my God. It's bitter. A little bitter? A little. But you're eating it. You're still eating it. It's good, but it's so bitter. It's chunky one from a chunky dad. Thanks. You're welcome. And nice and gooby. Yeah? I got some stuff in my braces, don't I? Yes. I'm sorry. That's okay. Sorry, YouTube. It's nice and chewy and chocolate. You need to try this recipe. That's way better than I thought it was going to be. I tried the batter before I baked it, and I thought it was gonna be awful. Because it's chick, well, it's chickpea flour, mm. which has a very strong flavor. Mm -hmm. I don't taste it the way I taste it in the batter, so I'm hey, really. Well, I'm a super taster. And he's a super taster. I'm shocked that I like this as much as I do. I really, really like it. It's soft, it's moist. It's what I really think. I love that it looks like a brownie, because a lot of the ones we've made are like half the height. And they just don't look gooey, but. Mm. Yeah, it is like a little dark chocolatey. Even though it's very smushy, I would say it's slightly dry for a brownie. Because mm. brownies often are a little more. Moist. Moist than that, but it's really good. But it's a winner. All around a winner. Mm -hmm. My wife is gluten free, so I'm gonna try to make this baked buckwheat bread and see if she likes it. So it's the night before, and you have to soak the buckwheat in water overnight. So we're doing that now. It's pretty simple. You just buckwheat in water. Tomorrow's the hard part. But it's cool because I'm baking my sourdough tomorrow too. So now we're both going to have fresh bread. Because that's the kind of guy I am. If I get bread, my other half gets bread. That's just how it works. Everyone gets bread. I just told my wife I'm making her buckwheat bread. And what did you say it tastes like? Your buckwheat tastes like a band-aid. So let's see if I make some band-aid bread. So now I have to, I soak the groats overnight. I drain them, get all the goopy off. And now I'm gonna hydrate the psyllium husk. And basically what you do is you just put the rest of the ingredients into the food processor and you, you blend it until it's smooth. And then you bake it for an hour. Oh, wow. That rose up. And then you Take it out of the tray thing and you bake it for another 10 minutes inside the oven. Is it like a quick bread or a yeast bread? It's quick bread, there's no yeast. Okay. It's just the groats have to soak overnight. But otherwise, like I'm gonna cook it after I cook. And I cook my bread this morning. Hmm. And then I cook your bread after that. We shall see how it turns out. And you'll have it for this afternoon. You gotta said it's, it's very important you let it cool before you cut into it. It'll taste less like a band-aid. <gasps> and then it stores in the fridge. In the fridge for up to five days or freezer for, for up to five months. Look what I made for you. Wow. Like buckwheat bread. What it looks like inside. It's yummy. It's got seeds in it. Yeah, a little pumpkin seed. This is really good. Actually, I'm surprised by how much I like this. It's soft. Well, I kind of starting to trust this lady. I this better. Lady, this person, this human who made this book. Yeah, a lady. I'm pretty sure it's a her. Anyway. We don't know what their pronouns are. We don't know what their pronouns there. are. You're right. Come on. I don't know how. 2023. I don't know how this holds up in days to come, but I can see this being great as a toast. I'm excited for you to try it. Smells like a band aid. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm. The, the, it's very bouncy. It's like dense, but there's a lightness to it. A little salty. And only slightly tastes like a band-aid. Like not enough to be bad. It's really good. I would eat this. 
this book has been successful so far, don't you think, Jeremy? For breakfast, I'm gonna make blueberry teff pancakes with lemon. Are you excited? Oh, hi. <laughs> I didn't think I had to be on camera. You always have to be on camera. The people love you. Mm -hmm. Say hi to Willie, everyone. Mm -hmm. Hi, Willie. I've never used teff as a flour, but I've seen it in other recipes. And I've always thought, I don't have that. I'm not gonna make it. But for this video, I ordered some teff from this company who is not a sponsor, but could be. It's a pancake. You, uh, you, know, you mix together your dry, you mix your wet, you combine them, put them on the stove, top. I forgot the lemon zest, so I just added it in and I blend it again. And you add some blueberries. So this one I like, it says put the blueberries in once it's on the, the pan, which is smart because then you get like proper blueberry distribution. And you don't get that one person who has all the blueberries, and the person who gets the last pancake, there's no blueberries. Nobody likes that. No, not, it's not nice. And it says we can top it with uh, plant-based yogurt. And I just made another batch of homemade yogurt last night. If you saw my last video that I did, for what I eat in a week, which is the Plant Pure Cookbook, I learned how to make yogurt and it's now a staple because it's so easy. It's so stupid easy. You should make yogurt if you like yogurt. I'm gonna try these just on their own without adding anything. Oh gosh. Are these doctors line up? That's the real pancake test, don't you think? Yeah, but you don't really eat them like that. It's true. But I know what pancakes taste like when I put maple syrup on them. They taste awesome. Spoiler alert. I share. Oh, Wooly. I think you're gonna be very happy. Mm. Lemon. That lemon's really nice. But the, so good. But the teff is light. I've never thought of using teff as a grain for something. Pro I wonder if it's expensive. Really good. Really good. Really good. I love them. So on the package it says teff is good for like baked goods. I might try to make some cookies with these. Ooh. With teff. Teff, solid find. If our daughter ever wakes up, I'll let you know what she thinks. It's so lemony. What was your reaction to the pancake? It looks like a ginger snap cookie. Is that a good thing? No. Do you want any banana or blueberry? Sometimes that's all the review you need from Annie. It's going for a second bite. Any any words to go with that? Yummy. We like it. This has been a good cookbook. It's a great cookbook. You should buy it. Well, or at least borrow it from your library. Plant-based delicious. Thanks for joining me and my family for Plant-Based Delicious. My final review for this cookbook is that I think if you're adventurous in the kitchen, you should buy it. It's full of really great recipes and they're not as hard as they seem. That said, if you're just starting out in the plant-based world, you might want to try borrowing it first. It's a solid book. My wife really, really loved it. And the kids like most of the stuff from it too, although I do think a lot of the recipes fit more of an adult palate. If you enjoyed this video, let us know in the comments below what you liked about it. And if you have any cookbook recommendations, hit us up there as well. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, do so right now for more videos like this. And YouTube really wants you to watch this video next. And I agree, it's a good one. It thinks you want to watch it. So give it a shot and see if it's right. Thanks.